Hi, in this video, I'm going to present about the confidence intervals and sample size. The objective of learning this chapter are to find the confidence interval for the mean when the standard deviation is known, to determine the minimum sample size for finding a confidence interval for the mean, to find the confidence interval for the mean when the standard deviation is unknown, and to find the confidence interval for variance and standard deviation. So we begin with estimation. What is estimation? Estimation is the process of estimating the value of a parameter from information obtained from a sample. For example, let's say we take a sample of university student from UMS. So if we state that 80% of the UMS students surveyed in Sabah said that they want to come back to the campus after the MCO, the 80% is the value of a parameter which is also represent the average number of students who wants to come back to the campus point estimate point estimate is the specific numerical value estimate of a parameter for example the best point estimate of the population mean is the sample mean to choose the best point estimate make sure we choose the right properties as follows the first one unbiased the mean of the estimates obtained from samples must equal to the parameter being estimated. Then, it must be consistent, meaning that if we choose a larger sample size, the value of the estimator approach the value of the parameter estimate. And the last one is, the best point estimate must be relatively efficient, meaning that of all the statistics that can be used to estimate a parameter, the best relatively efficient estimator must has the smallest variance. Interval estimate Interval estimate is an interval or a range of values used to estimate the parameter. So the estimate may or may not contain the value of parameter being estimated. So from this interval estimate, if we choose a specific confidence level, then we lead to the confidence interval. So, confidence interval is a specific interval estimate for parameter determined by the data. And we use specific confidence level of the estimate. So, I'll explain the confidence level later. So, this is the figure of point estimate and this is the confidence interval. So, we have the lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit. And then the width of confidence interval depends on the specific confidence level. So the higher the specific confidence level, the bigger the width of confidence interval. Let's say we consider the normal distribution data. If we say that 95% of the sample, then this is the range of data being considered. This range of data also represents the confidence interval and the middle line represents the point estimate. If we choose more samples out of a population, then we can have many different confidence intervals. These confidence intervals is just want to check either the true parameter lies in the same interval or not. So if the confidence interval contain the true parameter, then the confidence interval is correct or can be used to estimate the true parameter. Sometimes the confidence interval that we create does not contain the true parameter. So that's why in order to check either the confidence interval contain the true parameter, we need to take more samples. So this section show the importance notation such as the mean and the deviation formula for both population and sample and also alpha which is the specific confidence level is equal to 100% minus the percentage of confidence interval that we want to find so to find the confidence intervals for the mean when the standard deviation is known we use this formula so this is the sample mean and this is the z-score for two tail and then this is the population standard deviation and this is the sample size okay so we need to remember that different percentage of confidence interval has different value of z-score 
so make sure you remember the percentage and correspond to the z score okay so this is the formula for the confidence interval for the mean when we know the population standard deviation and to use this formula we need to check the assumptions so make sure the sample is random sample and then the sample size must be greater or equal to 30 or normally distributed when the sample size is less than 30 let us see this example example one a researcher wished to estimate the number of days it takes an automobile dealer to sell a Chevrolet Avio. A random sample of 50 cars had a mean time on the dealer's lot of 54 days. Assume the population standard deviation to be 6 days. Find the best point estimate of the population mean and the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. So from this question, the best point estimate of population mean is 54 okay because the best point estimate of population mean is always the sample mean and then from the percentage of confidence level which is 95 we choose the z-score to tell 1.96 and then we know the population standard deviation which is 6 and the sample size is 50 then we substitute the information into the formula okay and then you calculate both sides of this confidence interval then you get the final answer you can conclude your answer like this one can say with 95% confidence that the interval between 52.3 and 55.7 days does contain the population mean based on a sample of 50 automobiles now example 2 a large urgent care center with four doctors found that they can see an average of 18 patients per hour. Assume the standard deviation is 3.2, a random sample of 52 hours was selected. Find the 99% confidence interval of the mean. So the solution for this example, we choose the best point estimate of the population mean. So it is 18 patients per hour. And then, based on the 99% confidence interval, we choose the z-score 2.58. And then, we know the population standard deviation 3.2 and the sample size 42. And we substitute the information into the formula and we get the interval. And we can conclude from this confidence interval like this. Next, to determine the minimum sample size for finding a confidence interval for the mean, we use this formula so the sample size equals to the z-score total times the population standard deviation divided by the margin of error and square of it now let us see example 3 a sociologist wished to estimate the average number of automobile theft in a large city per day within two automobiles he wished to be 99% confident and from a previous study the standard deviation was found to be 4.2 how many days should he select to survey? So from this example, the information that we get is 99% confidence interval We can extract the z-score total equals to 2.58 And then the margin of error which is based on this statement Within two automobiles, we have E equals to 2 And then the population standard deviation 4.2 Then we substitute this information to the formula and we calculate it, we get n equals to 29.35. Since the sample size cannot be decimal, so we rounding it to the nearest integer, and it must be at least 30. So we can conclude that to be 99% confident that the estimate is within two automobiles of the true mean, the sociologist needs to sample the theft for at least 30 days. To find the confidence intervals for the mean when the standard deviation is unknown, we use this formula. So instead of using z-score, we need to use t distribution value. And also, we need to consider the degrees of freedom, n-1. The assumptions of using this formula are, the sample must be random, and then the sample size must be greater or equals to 30, or the population is normally distributed when the sample size is less than 30. So based on this formula, 
To find the T distribution value, we can find it using the Microsoft Excel with this function. Example 4. A random sample of high temperatures for 12 recent Thanksgiving days had an average of 42 Fahrenheit. Assume the variable is normally distributed and the standard deviation of the population temperatures was 8 Fahrenheit. Find the 95% confidence interval of the population mean for the temperatures. For this example, the information that we get are the base point estimate of the population mean equals to 42 Fahrenheit. From the 95% confidence interval, we obtain the value of alpha equals to 0.05 and df equals to 11. Using these two values, we substitute to the Excel function just now and we obtain the t value equals to 2.201. Also, the standard deviation equals to 8 and the sample size equals to 12. And substitute all this information to the formula and we calculate it we get the interval between 36.92 and 47.08. So from this confidence interval, we can conclude that one can say 95% confidence that the population mean for the temperatures is between 36.92 and 47.08 Fahrenheit. For example 5, we have this sample of data. So this data represents a random sample of the number of home fires started by candles for the past several years. For this data, we need to calculate the sample mean and standard deviation by using the Excel function. So for the sample mean, you can use average and the sample standard deviation, you can find the Excel function as dot standard deviation. So the values we obtain are 7041 0.4 for the mean and then 1610.3 for the sample standard deviation. From the example 5 also, we have the confidence interval 99%. So we can get the alpha equals to 0.01 and then the df equals to 6. Using these two values, we substitute to the Excel function to find the t value, we obtain 3.707. And also, we have the sample size equals to 7. Then, using these values, we substitute to the formula and we calculate it, we obtain this interval. So, from this confidence interval, we can conclude that one can be 99% confident that the population mean number of home fire is between 4785.2 and 9297.6. And lastly, Find the confidence intervals for variance and standard deviation. To find the confidence interval for a variance, we use this formula. And then, to find the confidence interval for a standard deviation, basically the square root of this formula. So the confidence interval for variance and the standard deviation involve the chi-square values. So chi-square right and chi-square left. The chi-square values can be obtained by using the Microsoft Excel as follows. So this formula for the chi-square right and this formula for chi-square left. The assumptions to find the confidence interval for variance and standard deviation are the sample must be random and then the population must be normally distributed. Let us see example 6. A study of 30 women found the standard deviation of their age was 5.2 years. Find the 95% confidence interval of the variance for the age variable. Assume the variable is normally distributed. So, to solve this, we extract the information as follows. The base point estimate of the population standard deviation is 5.2 years. And then, since the alpha is 0.05, which is we obtain from 1 minus of 0.95 over here so we obtain the critical values for the right side the critical value is 0.975 for the left side we obtain 0.025 to obtain these two critical values basically we consider the value of alpha divided by 2 for the left side and then 1 minus alpha over 2 for the right side then the df equals to 29. 
which is cut from the sample size minus 1. And using the Excel function for the chi-square right and left, we obtain these values. So we substitute the values to the formula and we get this interval. So we can conclude from this confidence interval like this. So 95% confident that the true variance for the age is between 17.2 and 48.9 years. So that's all from me. Thank you.